For those seeking refuge from the bustle of city life, Cliffside Cove, a small coastal town, served as a haven. It was a place where the air was always crisp and the evergreen trees whispered secrets to anyone who cared to listen. Nestled between the mountains and the sea, Jennifer Stevens had always been appreciative of the peace it provided, a haven where she and her family could flourish. Jennifer, a stay-at-home mother of two, found comfort in her garden, a haven of colorful flowers and lush vegetation that reflected the untamed beauty of the nearby forest. Nothing else could have brought her the comfort and peace that the earthy scent of the soil, the symphony of birdsong, and the soft touch of sunlight on her skin did. It was a calm morning, and as the sun started to rise, the sky was awash in delicate pink and orange hues. Jennifer was getting ready to take on the weeds that had overtaken her flower beds while wearing gardening gloves and an apron. While performing her task, she hummed a soothing melody as her fingers skillfully uprooted the unwanted guests. The morning had started out normally, but a sudden, thunderous boom shattered the peace. Jennifer froze, her heart pounding as she peered out into the distance. From the edge of the forest, smoke plumes billowed into the sky, suggesting a sinister catastrophe. She had a chilling suspicion that the tranquility she had come to know was about to be irrevocably disturbed. The town was filled with rumors and anxiety in the days that followed. It was found that a meteorite had struck the forest, leaving behind a critter and a trail of devastation. In order to study the extraterrestrial object and its effects on the environment, scientists from the closest city flocked to the location. Nobody realized that the sinister passenger the meteorite had brought along would soon change Jennifer's life and the lives of those around her forever. Life in Cliffside Cove continued despite the commotion. Although the meteorite became the subject of local rumors, few people were prepared for the true nature of the threat it posed. Jennifer kept working in her garden, lost in the routine rhythm of her work oblivious to the threat. It didn't take her long to notice a strange plant growing among her flowers. Its vivid green leaves and luminescent purple flowers stood out dramatically from the surrounding flora. She extended her hand, her interest peaked, and her fingers caressed the plant's delicate petals. One of the plant's concealed thorns broke her skin at that crucial moment, sending a piercing pain through her arm. As Jennifer examined the tiny wound, she recoiled while muttering obscenities. She brushed it off as a minor mishap, not realizing that poisonous spores had entered her bloodstream. A growing sense of unease and the knowledge that something was seriously wrong started to creep into her heart as she went about the rest of her day. The alien plant began to stir in the forest shadows as its evil influence started spread. Following her encounter with the strange plant, Jennifer began to experience unexplainable exhaustion. Her formerly lean limbs felt leaden, and her thoughts appeared to be circling in fog. Never suspecting that a more sinister force was at play, she blamed her real health on the strain of recent events and the sleepless night spent listening to her children's dreams. The tiny wound on Jennifer's arm resolutely refused to heal as the days and weeks passed. Its surroundings developed an unhealthy pallor, with a faint green glow that seemed to glow in the dark. The feeling in her arm started to fade and it was eventually replaced by a chilly numbness that seemed to come from the center of her bones. She appeared to be slowly changing from the inside out as though the very essence of the alien plant had seeped into her veins. With each day that went by, Jennifer's worry increased. She noticed that she was becoming more and more preoccupied with the changes in her arm 
spending hours in front of the mirror studying it and being unable to take her eyes off the unsettling glow that pulsed beneath her skin. Her fingers, which had once been quick, had grown clumsy and uncoordinated, as if they belonged to someone else. Jennifer was no longer able to deny that something was seriously wrong as the plant's influence had started to spread. Despite her growing anxiety, she chose to keep it to herself rather than share her fears with her family. She concealed the unnatural glow and the enveloping numbness that threatened to consume her by decking her arm into long sleeves. With renewed zeal, she threw herself into her daily tasks, desperately trying to keep up the appearance of normalcy. But even as she fought for her life, the alien plant persisted in doing evil things. The spores that had entered Jennifer's bloodstream multiplied tying her to their evil purpose by threading their tendrils through her flesh and bone. She would stand by the window during the quiet hours of the night while her family slept, gazing out into the gloom but keeping her eyes fixed on the spot where the meteorite had fallen. Her heart was filled with an irrational desire that she was unable to both name and understand. The alien plant persisted in growing in the forest depths, fed by the invisible bond it had with Jennifer. In search of new hosts and vehicles to channel its influence through, its roots spread throughout the soil. All the while, Jennifer's condition deteriorated, the once vibrant woman becoming a shell of herself and being consumed by an unexplainable force. Her family could no longer ignore Jennifer's changes as her symptoms worsened. She began to withdraw into herself, her once bright eyes now dull and haunted, as they watched with growing alarm. The moment had come to face reality, to face the horrifying truth of the alien plan, and to face the terrible fate that lay ahead for them all. The nightmare was just getting started as Jennifer's secret could no longer be kept hidden. Her family was becoming increasingly concerned about Jennifer's unpredictable behavior. They observed her agitation with increasing alarm as her once warm and loving demeanor gave way to a cold, distant presence. It appeared as though the alien plant had started to take control of her controlling her behavior with a malicious hand. The first person to question her about the change was her husband, Mark. Jennifer's responses were evasive and abrupt despite his attempts to persuade her to talk about her fear. She appeared to be protecting the plant inside of her in an odd way, as though she were doing the same. Although Mark could see the pleading for help in her eyes and the desperation in them, he didn't know how to assist her. Jennifer's self-control started to deteriorate as the plant's influence grew stronger. She discovered that she was compelled to spend hours alone in the garden shed, surrounded by the equipment and supplies she had once used to care for her cherished plants. The shed evolved into a kind of haven where the alien presence living inside of her could communicate with the dark energy filling the air. In a horrifying turn of events, Jennifer started to get angry with her family, her actions motivated by a need to defend the plant inside of her. She would suddenly erupt into rages, her eyes going crazy and her voice becoming unrecognizable as if she were possessed by an evil spirit. Once the center of her universe, her children now cowered in fear at the sight of her, wondering what had happened to the mother they had grown to love. Mark sought assistance from the local authorities in a desperate attempt to save his wife and safeguard his family. Dr. Harris, the pragmatic local physician, examined Jennifer but was unable to identify any underlying medical issues. In the hopes that a deeper comprehension of the alien plant might yield some insights, he suggested that they speak with a botanist from the nearby university, 
the alien plant thrived even as Jennifer's condition got worse. Through the forest, its tendrils spread in search of new hosts and vehicles for its evil intent. The plant's hold on Jennifer grew tighter in the dead of night, and she found herself standing over her kids' beds with trembling fingers. The alien plant that had taken root inside Jennifer was unlike anything the town of Cliffside Cove had ever seen. With its eerie glow and sly hold over its host, it appeared to defy all known laws of nature. The local experts were left perplexed and unsure of how to deal with this supernatural threat. Dr. Harris, however, did not give up easily. He had spent the previous few days going through old research papers in search of any information that might help him understand where the alien plant came from. Although he was a scientist, he was aware that sometimes the truth lay outside the purview of logical reasoning. Dr. Harris made a significant discovery on a chilly, foggy morning. In a long-forgotten journal, he came across an old entry describing her on and in with a similar alien plan in a remote area of the Amazon rainforest. A group of indigenous people, who had long known of the plant's existence and its malicious intent, had brought it to the attention of the scientific community. The plant was referred to in the article as a sinister sprout with tendrils that could contaminate the human body with an extraterrestrial presence. The infected host would subsequently turn into the plant's puppet and serve its every whim. The native population had created their own strategies for dealing with the plant, employing a rare flower with potent antitoxins to lessen its influence. Jennifer's family was informed of Dr. Harris' findings, and they found it difficult to believe what they were hearing. Even though the existence of such a supernatural threat seemed improbable, the proof was right in front of them. They sought assistance from the local university's botanist in the hopes that his knowledge and experience would hold the key to destroying the alien plant. He arrived in town that evening after midnight his eyes sparkling with interest and a touch of fear. They gathered in Jennifer's garden, amidst the plants that had been her haven in the past but were now terrifying them. The botanist probed the strange plant's leaves and flowers, his eyes narrowing as he did so. He mumbled, This is unlike anything I've ever seen before. It almost seems as though this plant is from another planet. The group listened intently as the botanist discussed the similarities and differences between the plant in Jennifer's garden and the ones he had encountered during his research as he shared his knowledge of foreign floor. It was a strange conversation that seemed more appropriate for a science fiction book than the sleepy seaside community of Cliff Psycho. They started to realize the true danger the plant posed as they dug deeper into its mysteries. The plant wasn't just an organism looking for a host. It was a malevolent force with a single-minded mission to expand its influence and subvert its host's will for its own sinister ends. They could see that the evil sprout was not alone as they peered into the forest gloom. There were additional forces at play other extraterrestrial beings attempting to settle on Earth. They could not afford to lose this battle. The family of Jennifer was aware that time was of the essence. They were no closer to figuring out how to free their mother and wife from the alien plant's influence. They were unaware of the location of a rumored rare flower that contained antitoxins that could counteract the effects of the plant. In an effort to find the elusive flower, they returned to the shed and started looking through Jennifer's old gardening books out of desperation. As they combed through her collection, they came across a page that had been dog-eared and had the following note written in the margin. It only flourishes in the deepest parts of the forest, where the trees are old and the ground is covered in decay. You will find what you are looking for if you look for the oldest tree, 
They only had this cryptic message to go on, but it was all they had. They were aware that time was limited and that they could not afford to lose even a single succumb. The darkness closed in on them like a living thing as they gathered their supplies and ventured into the forest. The only sounds in the forest were the occasional snap of a twig and the rustling of leaves under their feet. The necessity of their mission propelled them to move quickly. They could smell the stench of decay in the air and knew they were getting close to their destination. The old tree with its twisted and gnarled trunk was visible in the distance. They could see the strange flower growing at its base as they got closer its petals pulsing with a strange energy. However, their victory was fleeting. The forest around them came to life as they reached out to grab the flower from the ground. The branches of the trees extended like fingers and snare the intruders as they appeared to shift and rise. The ground beneath their feet trembled due to an unknown force as the air grew increasingly foul and acrid in smell. The extraterrestrial plan had not gone unnoticed and was not about to let go of its host. In order to defend its interests, it had called upon its otherworldly relatives, and Jennifer's family was caught in the crossfire. Their bodies were a blur of movement as they fought the grasping branches and writhing tendrils with everything they had. The kind of scene that belongs in horror films and spooky legends. It was like something out of a nightmare. The rare flower ultimately proved to be their savior. Its antitoxins were sufficient to loosen the alien plant's grip, giving Jennifer's family the opportunity to remove it from her body. They were shaken and scarred by the terrifying experience but they emerged from the forest feeling triumphant despite a strong sense of unease. They knew the war was far from over even though they had won the battle. There were other nefarious sprouts lurking about, ready to seize the unwary and tame them to their will. However, they had discovered a weapon to use against them, a means of retaliating against the unfathomable horrors that lay just beyond the limits of their perception. That was sufficient at the time. The family of Jennifer came out of the woods triumphant but uneasy. Although they had overcome unspeakable horrors and prevailed, the scars of their struggle would follow them throughout the rest of their lives. Jennifer's body had been stripped of the alien plant, but the harm had already been done. Her body had been ravaged by the plant's pernicious influence, leaving her weak and frail. Her family was aware that she would have a long road to recovery and that they would need to support her at every stage. When they went back home, it didn't feel as safe as it had before. Everywhere they turned, there was a lingering memory of Jennifer's possession as a reminder of the horror they had experienced. They started to clean the house, removing any signs of the alien plant's presence, and making an effort to return their lives to some semblance of normalcy. Normalcy, however, was a luxury they were unable to afford. There was no turning back now that they had encountered a world beyond their wildest dreams. They now had a duty to defend their town from the paranormal dangers that lay just beyond the limits of their perception. They started looking into the alien plan, learning everything they could about its behavior and history. In an effort to make the community more aware of the dangers present in the forest, they disseminated their knowledge to the locals. It was a difficult fight. The locals were dubious of their assertions and dismissed their tales as mere superstition and fantasy. However, Jennifer's family was aware of the reality and would not accept that their experience was merely a product of their imagination. As the weeks went by, they started to notice odd things happening in the neighborhood. Previously harmless plants started to act strangely, with their leaves twisting and contorting in an abnormal manner. 
Unidentified animals vanished, and their bodies were never discovered. The alien plant had a lasting impact on Cliffside Cove, and it was still very much present. However, Jennifer's family was prepared to fight. They knew they were the only ones who could defend their town from the supernatural dangers that lay ahead because they had defeated their own demons and come out on top. Although they would never forget the horrors they had experienced, they were prepared to do so once more. Now that they were soldiers, they were engaged in a conflict that few people were aware of. They would fight to defend their town from the evil sprouts that awaited just beyond the known world's edge for as long as it took. The terror in Cliffside Cove only increased as the days turned into weeks and the weeks into months. The only defense against the evil forces that sought to destroy the town was Jennifer's family, who had taken on the role of facto guardians thanks to their understanding of the alien plant and its otherworldly relatives. They used everything from machetes to flamethrowers to patrol the forest at night. They kept a close eye on the nearby plants and animals, looking for any indication that the alien plant had an impact. But despite their best efforts, they were powerless to stop the horror from spreading throughout their town. The evil sprouts had invaded every nook and cranny of the forest and beyond. Although they were no longer fighting in isolation, they were significantly outnumbered. Residents barricaded themselves in their homes and armed themselves against the unidentified threat as the town was in a panic. Yet it was useless. The evil sprouts were well established, and they were getting more powerful every day. The horror eventually increased one night to a new level. The trees started to warp and bend in an unnatural way as the ground shook beneath their feet. The sky turned a sickly shade of green, and the air began to fill with a foul, acrid smell. There was a raid on the town. The evil sprouts had gathered their forces, and they were moving in on their target. The members of Jennifer's family immediately reacted, arms at the ready. They fought the alien plants and their otherworldly minions with all the ferocity of the damned, their bodies a blur of motion. But the battle was hopeless. The evil sprouts were too strong, too cunning, and too intent on destroying everything in their path. Then, just as everything seemed to be lost, a miraculous event took place. Jennifer's life-saving rare flower bloomed, its petals vibrating with a potent energy. It served as a symbol of defiance against the darkness that threatened to engulf them and a ray of hope. With their bodies bathed in the flower's otherworldly light, Jennifer's family gathered around it. They engaged in battle with renewed vigor, the power of the flower infused into their weapons, and they started to turn the tide gradually. The fight was brutal and bloody, and it would become part of Cliff Side Cove's history. However, the evil sprouts were ultimately vanquished. The town was cleansed of their influence and the shadows retreated back into the forest. Family of Jennifer fell to the ground triumphant but worn out and battered. Although they had overcome unspeakable horrors and prevailed, they were aware that the battle was far from over. The evil sprouts would always be present, waiting to attack just outside the boundaries of the known universe. But now they were prepared for them. They would fight to defend their town from the horror that lay just beyond the limit of perception because they had the rare flower, the emblem of hope and resistance. They would remain steadfast and committed to their goal of putting an end to the darkness for however long it took. After the evil sprouts were slain, Cliffside Cove gradually started to resemble normalcy again. The residents of the town emerged from their homes, blinking in the bright sunlight, and started to reassemble their destroyed lives. In the community, 
Jennifer's family adopted a new function as watchdogs against the unknown horrors that lurked on the edge of perception. They taught the villagers about the perils that awaited them in the forest and beyond by imparting their knowledge to them, as a reminder of the darkness they had to overcome and the courage they had discovered in the face of unfathomable horror. The rare flower came to represent hope. The residents of the town took solace in it because it served as a comforting reminder that they were not fighting the unknown alone. But the horror persisted. It was waiting for the right time to attack by lurking just outside of their field of vision. Jennifer's family was aware that they would never be truly safe because the evil sprouts would always be ready to seize the unwary and manipulate them to their will. A strange new plan then started to appear in the forest one day. With tendrils that extended like fingers and leaves that shimmered in the sunlight, it was unlike anything they had ever seen. The family of Jennifer was aware that they could not take any chances. Their hearts heavy with the knowledge that the horror they had encountered was far from over, they armed themselves and ventured into the forest. The plant was in a clearing, its tendrils extending like an invitation when they discovered it. But they were wise enough to avoid being seduced by its deceptive beauty. With all the rage they could muster, they charged the plant, their weapons slicing through the air with a satisfying whack. Yet it was useless. The plant was too strong. It had strength unlike anything they had ever experienced. Their bodies were beaten and bruised, and their spirits were crushed as they fell back. The rare flower then suddenly began to bloom once more, just as everything appeared to be lost. Its petals pulsed with a supernatural energy, sending lightning-like currents of power through Jennifer's family. With their weapons enhanced by the flower's power, they attacked the plant once more. They succeeded this time around. The plant wielded and died, its otherworldly power fading away like a wind whisper. Although it was a victory, it was overshadowed by the realization that there would always be more horrors waiting to grab hold of the unwary and subjugate them. Though they were prepared for it, Jennifer's family was aware that their struggle was far from over. They would fight to defend their town from the horror that awaited just beyond the edge of perception because they had the rare flower, the emblem of hope and resistance. They would remain steadfast and committed to their goal of putting an end to the darkness for however long it took.